everybody. Welcome back to The Prognard. I'm your host, Jacob Williams, continuing my strategy guide session for Cuba Libre. And just as a friendly reminder, this isn't an unboxing, playthrough session, review or anything. It's a straight strategy guide. And today we're focusing on these guys, the Directorio, or the right-wing student-led uh, faction in... Cuba circa 1958, I believe, are the dates. Anyway, so uh, with this video uh, discussing strategy guide for Directorio, and as a reminder, just like we've done in all the other videos, these are kind of the talking points that we are going to be looking at as we discuss uh, the Directorio. Okay, so let's start with victory condition overview. Directorio wins by getting a population that they have under military control and plus the number of bases they have at or above 10 on a victory check during the propaganda round. Okay, so that's what they need to win. How are they going to go about uh, doing that? Um, I've been kind of playing uh, funny angles with the camera because I want to do the big reveal here uh, when we cover Path to Victory. So let me slowly inch the camera up. And Directorio are going to win by exploiting something that I call the Holy Trinity. Okay, I hope you like the way I boxed the Holy Trinity there in Directorio markers. So what do I mean by the Holy Trinity and the Directorio's Path to Victory? Well, the Holy Trinity is Las Vias. Camagüey and Oriente. And much like in the government video, why are these provinces so important? Well, with Las Villas and Oriente, because they're worth two population. So that makes those the second highest populations on the board, uh, second only to Havana with six population. Okay. So... Why is Camagüey part of the Holy Trinity? Well, it just happens to be here. Okay. And why do I think these areas are so important besides the population? Well, if you were to able to take control of these and get all four of your bases uh, out there in, in some permutation, well, then you have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nine out of your 10 points that you need. And think about uh, this strategic location. If this, if you're trying to capture this Holy Trinity as your path to victory, look at all the advantages that it provides. You're starting in Camagüey, right? Which is nice. So you're already going to have one gorilla there. So you don't have to fight anybody, push anybody out of the way. And Oriente starts with nobody in it. And both of them are impassive. And remember that Directorio can rally in any non-active space. So we're already starting out there. And Las Villas already uh, starts in neutral, albeit under government control. But that's not the biggest of deals. Especially if you play with an inexperienced government player who doesn't know to fight like hell for this spot. Okay, so this is going to be really critical um, as part of your path to victory. Now, notice how I didn't really talk about Camagüey, even though this is that one extra population you can pick up. But most likely, your other population that you're going to pick up is probably either going to be Montanzas, uh, Pinar del Rio, or La Habana. Um, why isn't Camagüey a really a valid target? And I'll also talk about this in my 26th July video, and maybe I should have talked about this in my government video. You know, there's lots to talk about, and I forget talking points sometimes, so um, forgive me. But cities are almost impossible to take control of, okay? You should not count on cities in any way as part of your victory as an insurgent faction, all right? And... Moreover, you see these two gorillas in Havana, you might as well write them off. They're probably going to get swept within the first couple of government turns, or I don't know, they're going to get reprised or 
something. They're going to go bye-bye, so don't get too attached to them. Their main purpose is if the government gets an early lead, like let's say, I don't know, they do a train or the events come up such that Camagüey and Santiago de Cuba get into active uh, support uh, right quick. Well, you can use these as your insurance policy to do a uh, terror to prevent the government from winning on a first prop card. But other than that, write those guys off. They're not going to be around too long. Okay, so we're talking about the Holy Trinity here being your path to victory as Directorio. Um, so how are you going to capitalize on that? Well, you're going to be doing a lot of rally actions. I'm going to say that rally is going to be probably the most used um, operation that you're going to do uh, during your plays as Directorio. Um so you're going to try to rally into these regions, subvert them when necessary to take away any opposition or support that might build up there. Um, Directorio tend to be a little more straightforward. They're probably the most straightforward faction in the game to play because they play the most typical dudes on the map, standard warfare uh, type strategy out of any of the... Uh, of, the factions in this game and most of the coin games in general. Let's talk about some pitfalls that I see a lot of new players uh, fall into a trap when thinking with Directorio. I don't know if it's because the people I've played with have come from more of a Euro uh, type game background or if they're just not thinking outside of the box, but a lot of times what I'm into, and let me construct a scenario. This is a totally made up scenario. I'm not really worried about being accurate, but let's say we have some sort of situation here in Las Vegas that you're fighting it out for and you have five guys there. No one controls the spot because no one has the strict majority. And then let's pretend for a minute you had... No more gorillas. Let's pretend that all of your gorillas on the, are on the board. What a lot of people might do, and they maybe even put a couple in Camagüey. What a lot of people might do in a situation like this, oh, and to up the drama, let's maybe put in two uh, 26 Jolly Gorillas. So in a situation like this, what a newbie player might think is, oh, well, I'm out of gorillas and... I don't have enough here, and but I'm really kind of spread too thin. I, I really maybe want to march from Camagüey into Las Vegas, but if I do that, I'm going to lose control of Camagüey. And they're just like, oh, I just don't have enough troops. And I'll, maybe I'll cover that in faction weaknesses, but if you want to play a straight Euro-style area control game, it's just not going to work with the directorio. You can't really just keep adding pieces because your forces are limited. And the outside of the box thinking, and it's really not that far out of the box, is if you can't add any pieces, eliminate pieces, okay? You have an attack option on your op sheet for a reason, and that reason is just for stuff like this, okay? So... Maybe if I'm in this situation, I'm fighting for two pieces of my Holy Trinity. I have no more pieces to add, so what am I going to do? Here's In these situations, new players won't realize I need to attack. Okay, Remember, if you run out of pieces to add, you can always eliminate pieces. Okay, What might that look like here? Um, actually, let me back up one step. Maybe players, new players do think about eliminating pieces, but... Maybe they get turned off by the fact that you have to roll dice. And to that I say you need to learn some basic statistics and run some numbers in your head. If I have five gorillas here, that means I have like a 80-something percent chance. Uh, whatever five-sixth is. I have a degree in math, but unless there's uh, letters in it, I, I can't really do it. But you have an 80 plus percent chance of winning that on a straight die roll. Here you have a 50 percent chance. Um, and maybe if you don't even like those odds, that's why you have an ambush special activity. You can um, 
you know, flip that guy up, remove these two, you know, roll a die over here. We get a two, maybe eliminate one of each for good measure. And now all of a sudden you flip the tide and you turn that into DR control and you're going to have an easier time controlling over here. And as an added bonus, you have freed up these gorillas. So maybe you can rally them elsewhere on the board. And that's another thing to remember uh, when you're, when you feel like you've run out of troops or gorillas with Directorio and you're just like, oh, I really, really, really want to rally over here to Montanzas, but I can't really march out of there and oh, I just don't know what to do. Well, you could rally and get these guys who aren't long for the world in Havana over here to Montanzas. Okay, so uh, eliminate cubes when you want to add but you don't feel like you have the resources, you know, don't automatically think of March, even though March is a very valid uh, op and, you know, you can definitely use it, you know, to kind of redistribute some troops, but think about eliminating pieces first. I, I, I can't stress that enough how much uh, new players uh, miss that when they are uh, playing directorio for the first time. Um, Maybe let's talk about getting bases on the map. There, there's really not too much else to say. If you have a group of three gorillas rallying to replace one with a base is usually enough protection. Um, I've been in these kind of wars where you maybe get government here. They really want to get rid of that base, so they sweep. And then you have to spend your turn rallying them back down. That's annoying, I know, but... Um, one gorilla protecting a base is usually pretty good. So don't be afraid to rally where you have uh, three plus gorillas. And I don't know if I've said this in the other videos, but, um, you know, rallying and placing a base with three plus gorillas, it's good enough for the flow chart. It's probably good enough for you. And I guess I should say at any time, if you ever feel lost on what you should do on the board, it is usually not a bad idea to pull out the flow charts for the solo game and read it over. And it, and it might give you some ideas of what you might want to do if you're stuck in any particular situation, because as sage as I think my advice is, it doesn't cover every single situation that can possibly come up. So, you know, use flow charts when in doubt would be my suggestion. Um, another thing to think about on your path to victory is, when you're trying to secure Las Vias, if you get a situation like this where you have a government base, you really, really have to depend on your assassinate special ability. Uh, you know, you'll do a terror here and then you'll uh, do an assassinate to get rid of that base. And then once that base is gone, uh, if you can ride, if you can keep your guy there until the propaganda round, then these troops have to go back. Like, you've thrown a serious wrench in the government's strategy if you can eliminate a government base anywhere in your Holy Trinity, but especially in Las Vias and Oriente. And as a matter of fact, if the government is getting their base into Oriente, um, you're at somewhat of an advantage because Oriente is going to provide your guerrillas more protection uh, with the sweep than uh, Las Vias. Though, obviously, Las Vegas will have some protection from assault since it takes uh, two uh, cubes. Uh, well, two troops, unless they have the momentum. Uh, two troops to eliminate one gorilla. So, you do have some advantages either way. Um, but maybe if the government base was in Montanzas and you're fighting it over, you don't really have any... Um, uh, what do I want to call it? Terrain uh, advantages, but... There you go. I, I haven't really seen too many people, uh, government players try to put a base in Montanzas. Usually if that happens, it's because um, Sierra, Sierra Maestra Manifesto has been uh, put into play. Uh, what else is there to talk about on the path to victory? I, I feel like this faction is a little bit shorter because once you figure out or once you know about the Holy Trinity, I mean... I feel like that knowledge is gets you halfway there to where you need to go. Um, maybe if you get a chance, try to take control over some uh, casino locations 
if you get the skim, that'll be important in the late game because as I'll discuss in faction weaknesses, like the government, Directorial kind of has a resource problem. And uh, we'll talk about that more when we get to that talking point. Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, what's funny is when I shoot these videos, there's always stuff that I wish I would have remembered to say. And, you know, sometimes, or I guess with the government uh, video, I uh, put some annotations in. I didn't really miss too much on the syndicate video. Um, so if I miss anything here, I will put it in annotations. All right, let's move to the next talking point because I don't know too much else to say on Path to Victory. Uh, propaganda round. <clears throat> propaganda round is something you're going to have to set up for during the campaign. Because you're going to have a resource problem, which we'll get to in fact, faction weaknesses, um, you want to try and get as many resources as you can during the prop round. Directorio get uh, resources equal to the number of spaces that they are in. So if I just took this uh, present state as a snapshot during a propaganda round, Directorio would get one, two, three, four resources uh, because that's how many spaces they occupy. Uh, so kind of uh, you'll have some incentive to spread out during the campaign to make sure you're going to uh, capitalize on those resources. Um, getting into the ECs does help your cause a little bit because it counts as a space for getting a resource. And if you outnumber uh, police there, you can sabotage it and kind of screw the government out of some resources. 26 July are going to be the main people getting into the ECs, but... You know, if you feel they're slacking off and you feel that the government, uh, or if you feel you can kick the uh, government in the teeth by taking away some resources, it's not a bad idea for you to get into them. Though you don't get the benefits of being in there as much as uh, 26 July or Syndicate. Uh, during the support phase of the propaganda, you're going to get an expat backing, which is basically a free limop rally, but it's slightly more restrictive in that not only does it have to be a non-active space, but it also has to be a space you control. And uh, I would say that free rally is kind of like an icing on the cake kind of deal. I don't think you're going to be able to get into any uh, critical spaces. Um, the best you're probably going to be able to do is take that opportunity as a lull in the action to put down a base or, I don't know, maybe you just kind of shore up uh, some strategic uh, location where you may do a march on the next uh, action or, or whatever. Um, expat backing is not as good as uh, civic action or agitation, but it's better than not doing anything, which is what the syndicate does. So, not too much else to say about that. You, you get your gorillas back underground during the reset phase of the propaganda round, which is good. But other than that, you don't care about the uh, propaganda round too much. All right, let's talk about faction strengths. I would say that the directorial strength is that they have really good solid op plus special combinations, okay? Um, they can subvert, which allows them to cover some of the cost of the resources subverts not as good as kidnap but you know it you don't have to outnumber police more than likely you'll control at least one spot on the board usually you'll have either las vias or oriente so you're going to get um two resources back on your ops where you can pair that up and um and it instantly nukes uh support or opposition so that's like really sexy uh, when you can take, if the um, 26 July player has uh, Oriente into active opposition and you can just do a subvert and just totally nuke that, something that he had to spend at least two resources on. Or let's say uh, Las Vias is in active support and then you're able to subvert it and nuke it. I mean, that represents eight resources that the government had to put into that. So your ops and special combos are, are really powerful. Or maybe it's better just to say your special operations are really good. 
And then assassination, I mean, being able to hit a base directly or a casino directly without having to go through their gorillas. I mean, it's really, really good. Um, you have a lot of forces. Uh, I guess 26 July also has 15 forces, but you have a decent number of forces. You'll feel spread out at times, but uh, we already talked about how you can eliminate cubes if you feel like you don't have enough. Um, maybe talking about some of the weaknesses of the Directorio, and I've kind of hinted to it, are these resources. Uh, you start out with only five. Uh, granted, you have the subvert, but other than that, you, uh, you don't just have the best of ways of getting resources back. And with doing a lot of rallying, and I'm going to say Directorio doesn't take as many events as the other factions. Um, this is more of a gut feeling, no real analysis of the cards, but I would say Directorio have on the whole, uh, worse options when it comes to the event cards. So, uh, that could be considered a weakness, but I just tend to find that I'm running out of resources. Maybe not as bad as the government, but probably, um, uh, running out of them faster than certainly Syndicate or uh, 26 July. Uh, mitigate that by spreading out for the propaganda rounds. Mitigate that by being a... Uh, um, what's that guy's name who directed Snatch? Uh, Benicio Del Toro. Be like uh, the movie Snatch. Try to find uh, Syndicate gorillas with cash markers and roll them and take it. Um, try to get the skim off of those casinos when you can. Um, because I think you will feel the pinch on resources for Directorio. So I would say that's kind of their biggest weakness. Um, oh no, they have one other weakness, which will actually make a transition to capabilities. Directorio has exactly one capability and it's not all that great. Uh, Morgan, Letcher, Gorillas, March... Two adjacent spaces. Uh, I have never seen a directorial player need to march two spaces. Um, so I, I feel like at least this card kind of confirms what I was saying. That directorio on the whole have um, uh, less good events. Um, you'll notice that I put Pact of Caracas here as well. Uh, yes, I realize that's a 26 July event but it directly benefits the Directorio as well. And I'll also talk about this more in the next video when I discuss 26 July. But Directorio benefit from this because 26 July through operations and special activities are not allowed to remove your pieces. Now you're not allowed to remove theirs and no one can remove any placed opposition. So that means that... Um, if you have it at passive support, uh, 26 July can't terrorize and flip it over to active, but you can't subvert it to get rid of it either. So this card can be situationally good for you if 26 July is up on the ropes, if the government is doing a great job of uh, knocking them around, well, then it's good for you because you're more worried about them taking your uh, pieces off the board than you are worried about getting rid of um, opposition. And I guess in the next video, I'll talk about where it might be good if 26 July, um, you know, if Directorio are down, then it's good for 26 July to take that. But remember the price of breaking the pact is high. You have to get rid of two of your bases at one time to get rid of it. So you basically have to give up two victory points um, to get that. Okay, so That'll lead us into the critical events that the Directorio has. And I'll, uh, you might be happy to know that I finally figured out that one card that lets you drop people into Pinar del Rio. And that's Operation Fisherman. After my last video, I was like, oh, I really need to know that card. But um, it's a 26 July card. I was thinking it was Directorio or 26 July. But anyway, I, I'm getting off on a tangent. So some critical events. Um, I kind of pick these because I think they either give you resources or they um, uh, 
um, will let you get gorillas into places you're not normally allowed to go, which I think is a huge boon to the Directorio. So, you know, Escapade's a good one. Carlos Brio, um, Echeverria, Echeveri. Full disclosure, I might do a decent job of pronouncing the provinces and the cities, but I don't speak Spanish. Um, I kind of do okay because I've been uh, exposed a lot to the names. But anyway, um, so these are kind of some critical events that are letting you drop bases. Uh, Escapade lets you drop one into Oriente or Camagüey province, so right into the Holy Trinity. Um thought one of them lets you get one into Las Vias. Yeah, here we go. Place a base and two girls in Las Vias. So a lot of cards helping you out in the uh, Holy Trinity. And then I put Sierra, uh, Sierra Maestra Manifesto in there just because that's a way for you to get two bases for free, which is always good. It's like getting two free victory points. So there we go. That's my run through of the directorio a little bit shorter because they're a little more straightforward. Uh, hope you're enjoying the video series, uh, my email and, um, BGG handle or at the end credits. So leave a comment down below or message me on BGG or send me an email. If you have any further questions or anything you'd like me to discuss in the, in the 26th July video, so with that, I'm Jacob Williams with the Prognard. Thanks a lot.